You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider. Insider.com. This is the Option Industry Council's Wide World of Options. Before we start today's show, investors should know that options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. You should not enter into an options transaction until you have read and understood the risk disclosure document, characteristics and risks of standardized options. This brochure is available by visiting optionseducation.org or by calling 1-888-OPTIONS. OIC makes no recommendation with respect to any financial firm. OIC does not make any warranty as to the the accuracy, usefulness, timeliness, or the continued availability or existence of information created or maintained by others. Multiple leg strategies involve multiple commission charges. Opinions and strategies expressed by others are not necessarily those of OIC, nor does OIC endorse, warrant, or guarantee products, services, or information described or offered by such firms. Commissions, fees, margins, interest, and taxes have not been included in any of the examples used in this show. These costs impact the outcome of all stock and options transactions Consult your tax advisor about any potential consequences. None of the information presented in this show should be construed as a recommendation to buy or sell security or to provide investment advice. Welcome to the Options Industry Council's Wide World of Options. OIC was created in 1992 to educate investors and their financial advisors about the benefits and risks of exchange-traded equity options. And the Wide World of Options radio show is one of the ways the message is spread. OIC also offers a variety of other resources to those interested in learning more about options, including webinars, podcasts, and live events. For more information, check out optionseducation.org. Now, here's your host, OIC's Director of Individual Investor Education, Joe Burgoyne. Welcome to OIC's Why World of Options. Thanks for joining us for today's show. Let's get started first with Strategy Spotlight. It's time to break down the latest option strategies. That means it's time for Strategy Spotlight. Joining us today on Strategy Spotlight, is uh, OIC instructor and senior instructor over at the Chicago Board Options Exchange, uh, our good friend Peter Lusk. Welcome, Peter. Well, thank you, Joe. Nice to be here. I know you, uh, you know, the whole idea with Strategy Spotlight is to focus on one particular strategy, uh, and you chose the bull call spread. Before we get into that, how about if you tell our listeners a little bit about uh, your career in the industry? Oh, boy, you're going to take me back and age me because you also know I've got three grandkids at this point in time. But I started out as a market maker on the floor of uh, SIBO Global Markets back in uh, January of 93 and segued that uh, up here in 2007. So I've been up here for about 11 and a half years at the Options Institute, and it's basically just a thrill to do things like this with uh, OIC. So, uh, um... And with that being said – the clock is ticking, so yeah, love doing this, and uh, I'm going to pretty much be retiring uh, within the next 24 hours, and that's the truth. And, well, to our listeners, I'm sure many of you uh, know Peter, as he said, uh, you know, been down on the floor for quite some time, but then uh, over 11 years out helping all of you get a better understanding of the listed options product, and as Peter said, the clock is ticking, so uh you know, he was kind enough in his last 24 hours on the job to make time to talk about the the bull call spread. So we appreciate that. Peter, why don't I turn it over to you? Uh, why do you want to talk about the bull call spread? Well, great question. You know why is because normally traders begin with buying calls or buying puts and having this directional attitude. Well, this is also a directional trade. But we like to say that it comes with realistic expectations. And we like to also say that uh, traders at some point in time get a little bit smarter from listening to you guys at the OIC, and they tend to graduate 
towards spread trading because spreads create a bunch of opportunities, including spreading off certain risks to a certain degree. So as as they evolve, I mean, um, how, how about well the bull? How about an example so people can wrap their their you know heads around exactly what we're talking about here? Yeah, sure. Let's just say we've got a stock trading fifty dollars a share. We'll keep the math pretty simple. And let's just say that uh, let's think about my father for a little bit. If he was bullish on this stock. What would he do? Yeah, he'd jump in and buy the shares, right? And he'd probably buy 100 shares at 50, which is going to cost him $5,000. Now, some of the smart traders that are out there listening, maybe they're thinking, you know what? I don't want to spend $5,000. What if I just buy a call option? And the most I can lose with a call option is what I paid for it. So let's just say we have a trader with the intent of buying one call option and paying $2.90 for that guy. All right, so we've got the stock buyer, we've got the call buyer, and now we've got a trader who's a little bit more astute and he's got realistic expectations. So what is this trader going to do? This trader is going to buy a 50-strike call option at two ninety, dollars and knowing that this stock is not going to go to the moon like Ralph Cramden used to tell Alice or my <laughs> brother – you know, he's, this trader is going to have realistic expectations. So this trader is going to buy an option and sell an option. And you know, Joe, in the pits here in Chicago, we had the saying, when you buy something, you got to sell something. Again, to spread off certain risks of time and volatility. So let's just say this trader buys a 50-strike call and then sells a 55-strike call up on top for, let's just say, $1.20. So we're putting this whole trade on for a net debit of $1.70 or $170. So $170 versus what my father would pay for about you know, 100 shares at 50, we're talking $5,000. That right there is a wonderful trade-off for sure. So this trader would be long the 50-55 call spread. And then, Joe, I think you're going to ask me, well, why the 55-strike call? And now that I'm conducting the interview for you, Joe, <laughs> gee, you know, the first thing that I do when I when I look at, uh, let's just say Leisha decided, you know, Peter, can you come look at this? Uh, I'm thinking of placing a trade. Well, the first thing I'm going to look at is the stock. What's the stock? And we know the symbols that are out there that everybody likes to trade. I get that. And then what about the stock price? Okay, 50. And then... I'm going to go and just be like a quarterback and I'm going to get under the center and I'm going to look at this stock and I'm going to say, Hmm, options tell me a story. Options tell me a story of maybe movement in the underlying. So with that being said, my eyes are going to go right towards the at the money straddle. And what is that? If the stock is trading 50, I'm going to look at the fair value of the 50 strike call and the fair value of the excuse me the 50 strike put let's just say each of those guys are about 2 bucks 2 plus 2 is 4 right so i'm expecting a move up or down of about $4 so with this bull call spread example maybe the option that i'm going to sell is just outside of that expected range on the upside and again we don't know we can't tell if the stock is going to go higher or lower by the, by the at-the-money straddle, but we do know that by implied volatility, we're going to get some movement maybe in the underlying. So that's how, that's how I choose strike prices anyway. That is uh, just a crystal clear explanation. Um, well, it makes it, a lot of sense. It, excuse me. This is Willie from Arlington Heights, Illinois. I'm a uh, long-time Hello? listener, a first-time caller, and I have a question. <laughs> uh, couldn't I just do the covered right? owning the stack at 50 and selling the 55 strike price call. <laughs> I'll, I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thank you very much. Willie, Willie, that, that's completely unexpected. Um, Willie, are you still with us, Willie? Mike, goodness. Willie, come on back. My goodness. <laughs> Willie, what a pleasant surprise. I'll, 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 I think... hang up, I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Thank you very much. Maybe this well, call was for sports radio, or is it for us, Joe? I, you know I how they always say, I'll, I'll hang up and listen for your answer? Okay. 
My goodness. You know, over Comes these years, break. over these years, Joe, I come to recognize a lot of my. I might say that I have a few fans, and I think I know Willie. And it's just such a treasure that he checks in periodically with these wonderful uh, questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm a little taken back, to be quite honest. I'm not sure how uh, you know he got into this. Uh, this interview on the on the strategy we're talking about, but uh, it's good good to hear from Willie. Um, maybe we'll should we come back to Willie, or do you want to address that idea well, of the covered well, right? It sure it sure makes it fun, you know. Well, maybe Willie well, is long a uh, hundred shares of stock, and he's looking just to sell an out of the money call up above for income. Willie can certainly do that, but Willie also has these realistic expectations because maybe if Willie sells that out of the money call, that could also be a target price for the sale of Willie's stock. How about that? And if Willie doesn't sell that stock with that potential obligation, then Willie can go back out and sell another call option, just like throwing another line in the water with a bobber on it, right? And what's Willie's bait? Willie's bait is that 55 strike. And he's hoping maybe and he gets a nibble and unloads that stock. Could it, I Excuse like me, this is Willie again from Arlington Heights, Illinois. Uh, <laughs> Long-time listener. Um, Tuffy, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> as far as the covered right goes, um, I've always thought that it was more of um, an investment in income type strategy and maybe an exit type strategy, whereas the uh, the call spread is is a little bit more speculative. Uh, could could you comment on that, Mr. Lott? Well, you know what? And this is who from what town? This is Tuffy from Tuffy. Okay. Tokyo, Tokyo, Tuffy Rhodes from Tokyo, Japan. Oh, the former ball number, player that number, started out for the Chicago Cubs. Exactly. And later, well, we sure, hear Tuffy. My theme song. Well, well, here's the deal, Tuffy, and I'm, I'm glad you called along with Willie and the rest. But um, here's the deal. You really have to have a three-part forecast, and that is, number one, what is the stock or the underlying going to do? And, and Tuffy, that's the toughest part. You can get really, really good at all the mechanics of trading options, but it all comes down to the performance of the underlying. So number one, what's the stock going to do? Number two, how long is it going to take to do what you want it to do? And number three, what's your expectation of volatility? So Tuffy from Japan, make sure that uh, you you – Engage a three-part forecast, but also you got to be right on that underlying. So maybe just follow 20, 22, 25 underlines and get good at it and get to know them intimately like your ball players, your fellow ball players back on the Cubs in those days. You guys got to be buds in the, in the clubhouse. Well, the same way when it comes to trading options, get buddies with uh, the underlines and watch how they perform and watch how they perform in sympathy with other stocks. So... There you go, Tuff. I hope that helps you in your trading. Hey, Peter, you're Thank you very uh, much. And, and I'm going to come back to you, Willie. Any other questions? No, Mr. Lust really covered this topic well. He sounds like a, I don't know, a very knowledgeable guy. <laughs> and how about you, Tuffy? It seems to me that the option education industry is losing a, a leader in sharing knowledge with the retirement of Mr. Lusk. Well, Tuffy, I well, think to hear right that from button. all across the planet, Joe, is, is very rewarding, you know. In our business, nice to hear the feedback. And I'll tell my wife that I get positive feedback, or even people clap for me in a big ballroom, and she's like, yeah, sure. So thank you, Tuffy, all the way from uh, around the world. Appreciate it. Well, Willie and Tuffy, it's great to have you join today. I think um, – our good friend Peter here showed exactly what he's all about, you know, with his uh, response to your questions, his explanation of the bull call spread, using that at the money straddle to pick strike prices. I mean, this is what our good friend's been doing for 11 years uh, to help all the investors out there. So uh, I think, uh, Mr. Peter, um, you know, any, any, any closing thoughts here? Not really. Just keep educating yourself. And uh, even listening to some of the callers and the questions might say and ring a bell in your head like, yeah, I didn't think about that. So 
So hopefully we've engaged everybody today and keep educating. OIC's got a wonderful website. And I even go on there, Joe, to uh, find some of the answers because in this business, you never stop learning. That's exactly right, Peter. Well, uh, you know, again, thanks for uh, joining us in your last few hours on the job. We really appreciate it and all the best to you uh, in the days and years ahead. It's been my pleasure, Joe. Thank you very much. And listeners, I'd like you to know, uh, joining us as special guests today were Marty Kearney and Russell Rhodes, both longtime uh, employees and colleagues with Peter Lusk at the uh, CBOE. So, uh, you know, they were kind enough to join us as a surprise to Peter today. So just wanted to let you know. Now, let's meet the movers and shakers from the world of options in profiles and perspectives. Joining us today on Profiles and Perspectives is Andrew Giovanazzi, the Chief Operating Officer at Options Pit. Welcome, Andrew. Uh, hey, Joe. Thanks for having me. Hey, great to have you, uh, to offer your wisdom to our listeners about uh, how you approach education. You know, before we maybe get into that, why don't you, uh, and, and I'm guessing a lot of our listeners maybe already know you, but for those who don't, how about if you tell us a little bit about your career path in the industry? Oh my gosh, my career path. Uh, well, yeah, I graduated. Keep, keep it under 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, graduated from college at UC Santa Cruz, um, wandered into San Francisco looking for a job. Uh, got a intern, like uh, an entry-level position as a quote operator, which I don't think exists anymore, on the P Coast. Uh, and about a year and a half later, I was trading for Group One. I stayed with them for 10 years. Uh, ran the DPM in Chicago, helped start it up, built that operation. Um, then went on my own for six years uh, with a friend of mine. Uh, had a good run. Uh, basically stopped trading, uh, floor trading in the mid-2000s. Just when electronic trading came on, we were basically competing against Citadel. It wasn't much fun anymore. And since then, uh, I've done some uh, software design, uh, product design, um, which uh, that's how I met you, Joe, uh, for Acumen. And then I've been edge helping people learn how to trade since 2011. I can't believe it, but it's been that long. And so, it does, that the, the, the education side of the business, uh, you know, the days go quick, don't they? Oh my gosh. Uh, and actually I really, I used to teach floor traders, you know, all our new interns and stuff, how to trade. Is that possible? Uh, uh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, we did it for, I mean, group one went from 20 traders to 160 traders while I was, you know, running the education program. So apparently it's possible. Um, um, so now you, we teach retail how to trade like a floor trader would. So, Everything we do at Option Pit uh, is around learning how to position, how to understand market conditions, and position for the market condition. So it's actually a fairly high level of education. It's almost more like if you went, if somebody that was t trading options for a long time uh, gave a course on trading options, and you know, and it, it takes most of our clients six months to a year to get sort of through our program, what we call our pro program, um, and we just sort of immerse them immersion option immersion therapy we'll call it um, so they learn the fundamentals and we've had clients for seven years i'm still like our chat room like our education products like our the stuff that we put out on a daily basis we create tons of content every week on you know market because the way the good thing is the market you don't like what happened today wait till tomorrow so it's easy to teach people to be patient if it's not there you know, today, it could be there tomorrow. Um, and that's why I think conditional trading, it, I don't see it in the industry very much, to be honest. Everybody, you know, is kind of doing their own thing. But um, so far, it has resonated with our clients. We have a loyal client base and, um, and it works. So as long as things work, I don't, uh, I don't want to fix it. Amen. Well, you mentioned patience and, and then I think of discipline. So, you know, you talked about a, a fairly high level approach. I mean, if you're taking, uh, you know, let's, let's categorize, um, you know, the possible student as a, as a retail investor, um, what, what about, and, and to take them, you know, from maybe a novice to, 
the mindset of a, of a floor trader, was, which is something very different. And you say maybe six months to a year, you know, for a listener to maybe get to the point where you want to take them. Do they, you know, what, what if somebody just doesn't know a call from a put and they come to you? What's, is, is that a, you know, can you, can you work with investors like that? Um, we do. Um, we have different products for them. So we have stuff like the gold course, which is what I would say is our introductory course and options, um, where you are just learning from a call or a put, but we also immerse them, um, in Greeks, um, how to Greeks volatility, how to position. So we take them from a call to a put and how options work very, very quickly. So the thing is, I think it's important too for investors to realize um, and this is what I try to tell people right away. What are you doing with your option? Are you an investor, meaning you're a long-term holder? You want to take the underlying. That's a type of, that is a type of position. Or are you somebody that's more interested in the short-term trade, you know, and trying to make basically better, better money than the market might give you uh, just buying stocks, you know, year in, year out. You're actually trying to trade the options. You got to be realistic. If you're trading an option that has 30 days or less to expire, you know, it's doubtful you're really an investor. You're more like, I'm just trading the options. So what we teach people is you have to separate those things. So buy riders and stuff like that, that are investors that are kind of long term, that is a teaching path for us. We teach that. There's also the teaching path of I want to know how options work every single day, everything about them. That is a secondary teaching path. So we just want to make sure that people are doing the right thing that's suited for what they want. You know, you don't want your investor path to get confused with your trading path because then you end up with positions, I think, that are ultimately unmanageable. Right. And they're, they're two different, very different approaches to investing and then obviously option usage. So, uh, you know, that's good. Um, how about... I, you know, you mentioned you've been doing the education for a number of years now. You have, uh, you know, let's say a favorite or a least favorite aspect of of the options education side. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a good question. question. I, that's, that's a good question. Um, I think I like my clients. I have fun teaching them. Um, that part probably is my favorite, you know, because I actually get to talk to people because, you know, screen trading is pretty lonely business at this point. Um, yes. I like that part the best. Um, as far as the thing I like least is just, you know, really in the business, just trying to separate, you know, the types of education. I think, you know, we're more of an education company. Like we're teaching people how options work. And, you know, one of our, you know, precepts is, is you have to, you have to know how your position is going to perform before you put it on. And I don't think, uh, I would like to see the industry more do more of that. Maybe we do that a lot. I mean, that's what the OIC does and all, you know, the actual outlets that provide that type of stuff. But I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of that um, out. Um, so that's what I would say as far as the education business goes. Um, I think, um, you know, to your point, uh, a, a lot of firms have improved in that area. And I think that, uh, you know, investors are pretty lucky both with, you know, almost immediate access to the marketplace, you know, with quick executions. And then, uh, you know, the different education opportunities, be it online or, you know, live, um, you know, the industry's come a long way in that area, I think. And, you know, guys like you were making that happen. Um, to wrap it up, I, I get one other question. I mean, because, you know, you have been in the education business for quite some time. If folks are just starting out now, of course, you know, one thing they can do is reach out to you at Options Pit. But uh, in addition to that, is there a must do that you would advise somebody brand new to options, you know, in terms of how to get started? Yeah, I think uh, uh, the must do is understand risk first. Um, I think people are more interested in trying to make a buck first. Um, and what they should do is really understand risk first, like what really can happen trading options. Um, I think everybody thinks they, or a lot of people, they, they have an idea and they think they're the only one with this great idea and they can't lose. Um, and that's not really how the market works. Um, so I would tell everybody, understand the risk of your position first. Learn, 
learn how it works, and then, you know, think about investing, trading, and kind of picking the path that you want to be on. So that's what I would start with. You know, get a couple of good books. You pick up some of Mark's books um, or Nate Berg's Options, Volatility, and Pricing. Start learning how these things work. I think that's the, uh, that's the best way to start. Andrew, I, I think you've made my day with that answer. Understand risk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it. Um, well, uh, how can folks get a hold of you and, um, you know, the gang at Option Pit? Uh, yeah, you can email direct, uh, directly, Andrew, at optionpit.com. Uh, they can go to our store and just buy any of our products that teach you how stuff works. Um, sign up for our mentoring classes. Just go to optionpit.com. Um, click the mentoring button. Uh, we do have a blog that we put out for free that has actually really good content in it. Um, you just sign up for that. Um, Got to give us your email address. Um, but that's how you get a hold of us. Beautiful. Well, Andrew, uh, we appreciate the time and the wisdom uh, and, and your, uh, your ability to offer your experiences here. Thanks for joining us today on uh, Profiles and Perspectives. Thanks for having me, Joe. Next, let's upgrade your options toolbox with cutting-edge trading platforms, devices, and information. Let's talk about tools, resources, and good reads. In today's tools, resources, and good reads, I'm combining the tools and resources. Many of you may already realize this, but some of the very best option tools and resources can be found on the exchange websites as well as on your brokerage firm's website. Tools like pricing calculators, volatility charts, analytics, data, strategy risk reward profiles, all of this and more can be found at these excellent websites. So the exchange websites and your brokerage websites, do check them out. Today's good read is an annual classic, The Stock Trader's Almanac by Jeff Hirsch. Jeff's dad, Yale Hirsch, started this publication 52 years ago. Jeff hasn't missed a beat keeping this wide-ranging publication up to date with investment trends and insights. All investors can benefit from the offerings by Jeff Hirsch, Stock Traders Almanac. Consider taking a look. As I said, it's the 52nd year of this pub for this publication. That's it for today's Tools, Resources, and Good Reads. Thanks for joining us. Ready for a little nostalgia? It's time to take a look back. We're going to look way back in today's Looking Back segment. 45 years, in fact. April 26, 1973, the first day and month of the listed options industry. Options were listed on 16 companies that first day. We have over 4,500 companies, indexes, and ETFs with listed options today. 928 contracts cleared that first day. 2018, each day the markets are open for business, the industry is averaging just over 20 million contracts traded each and every day. That's 20 million. I'm not sure how many strike prices were listed on the original 16 companies in April of 73, but today, we have over 950,000 different strikes listed. Lots and lots of choices for investors. Many of you may know it wasn't until 1977 that the SEC approved puts as a tradable product. The first four years of the industry, calls only, no puts. 45 years, quite a record of innovation and growth, lots of changes. That's today's Looking Back. We love connecting with our listeners. With that in mind, let's take a moment to answer a few questions on OIC's Wide World of Options Q&A segment. We'll respond to a couple of listener questions that we've received recently. Bullseye 7 asks, are options good for day trading or just swing traders? Well, let me start by defining the difference between the two types of trading. Day trading is just what the name suggests trading every day, opening, closing, and adjusting a position or multiple positions. Swing trading is a bit more patient approach to trading. Once a position is initiated, generally 
a period of three plus days passes before an adjustment is made to the original position, allowing for that initial strategy to work. Option use is very appropriate for both of these types of trading. The flexible, dynamic quality of the listed options product allows for both short-term and long-term usage. Now, our second question comes from Oak Trade. What is the reason that someone would write an in-the-money covered call? Well, it seems like a waste of time since you're capping all of your upside. Well, a couple ideas come to mind from the question and the comment. First, as far as capping your upside profit potential, that is true. But remember, all covered call strategies cap upside profits, whether you're selling in the money, at the money, or out of the money call against the long stock. Why do you write covered calls in the first place? If your upside is capped, income. Two, the additional income we create in our portfolio by taking on the obligation to sell stock at the strike we chose is why this strategy has become so popular, especially in a low interest rate environment. Now, let's address the heart of the question. Why sell an in-the-money call? Now, let's be sure everyone understands what in-the-money means. Here's a quick example to illustrate in-the-money. Stock price, $50. We sell the $45 call with 60 days to expiration. The value of the call will be the $5 of intrinsic or in the money amount. That's the difference between the strike price and the stock price plus whatever time value is attributed to the 60 days. Let's say $2. So the option is valued at 7 bucks. That means we have $7 of downside protection below the 45 strike. Maybe the investor was a bit bearish on the underlying and felt the need for more protection versus selling an at-the-money or out-of-the-money call. Your downside protection is always defined by the value you take in when you sell the call in the covered call strategy. I hope that makes sense and answers your question. Thanks for these questions. Keep them coming. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to the Options Industry Council's Wide World of Options. If you have questions about anything you've heard on today's show, email Joe Burgoyne at options at the OCC.com or visit optionseducation.org and chat with investor services. Interested in connecting with OIC on social media? Like the OIC page on Facebook. Follow them on Twitter at options underscore edu and Instagram at options education and follow their page on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening and be sure to tune in to the next episode of Wide World of Options. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.